very pleased to welcome to the show for the first time Congressman Darren LaHood. He's a Republican, represents the 18th Congressional District in Illinois, and he joins me now. Congressman, good to have you back. Or here in the first place. Hey, Guy. Uh, yeah, Guy, thanks for having me on. Good to be with you and your listeners today. Glad to have you here. It's, I said good to have you back because I feel like I sort of know you because I've followed your career for quite some time since you took over that spot down in Illinois 18. I used to live in Illinois uh, for a number of years. I went to school in Chicago and lived in Chicago for a couple of years. And that's really the focus of the first part of my questions that I have for you here. It has to do with the letter that you sent along with other Republicans from Illinois opposing non-COVID related bailouts for the state of Illinois. And Congressman, look, I had a great time in Illinois. I had a great time in Chicago. It's a great town, some very wonderful people there. But to say that that state is badly managed is the understatement of the century. And as a former Illinois taxpayer, I really bristle at the idea of exploiting a pandemic like this to try to get some federal taxpayer dollars to patch some holes that have been created and exacerbated and ignored willfully for years and years and years. You wrote a letter to this effect. Explain what you wrote and why. Well, we wrote a letter in response to the Democrat Senate president in Illinois, who was basically asking for a $44 billion bailout from the federal government. And as you alluded to, Guy, we have been terribly mismanaged from a fiscal standpoint by our state legislature and a number of governors in the state of Illinois. Currently, we are $140 billion in unfunded liability for our pension system in the state of Illinois. We continue to be almost dead last when it comes to a business climate in Illinois. And and we've hemorrhaged people out of this state yep. uh, that have gone to lots of other states. So we have a problem there. So uh, I helped author a, a response to the Senate president that said, uh, the fiscal mismanagement that Illinois has engaged in for the last 25 years, the federal government is not going to be there to bail you out. This predates Corona. It predates uh, what has happened with this pandemic. And if you're looking for us to come in and, again, bail out the pension system or, or bail out bloated spending, we're not going to do that. And lastly, we also reference this. Our governor has put on the ballot a progressive income tax that will continue to drive people out of the state. We don't believe now is the time to be raising taxes when we've shown no proof that we can fis fiscally uh, run the state in a responsible manner. And that's what our letter laid out. Well, successful people are leaving Illinois. I mean, I know a few people who were making a lot of money living in Chicago, and finally they threw up their hands and said, I can't do this anymore. One of them moved to Texas. One of them moved to Tennessee. One of them moved up to Wisconsin. Uh, other states surrounding Illinois that have much better business climates, much better tax climates, successful people are being chased out of the state. The Democrats have one solution to everything, and it's a one-party system, basically, in Illinois, and that is to raise taxes on the rich even more and demagogue even more and spend endlessly. So it's a vicious cycle. We've seen it unfolding now for decades. And I guess here's the question that I put to a number of different lawmakers, and, and I wonder how you would answer it, especially being from Illinois. I don't have a problem with states and localities that are having real budget pinch problems directly related to coronavirus to maybe get some help from the federal government. I don't think that's an unreasonable thing to ask or to think about. I am worried about exactly what you talked about. States explicitly like Illinois saying, okay, here's our chance to fill these gaps that we've created for ourselves and have Uncle Sam and Washington and taxpayers from a bunch of well-run states come in and give us the money that we need, uh, at least part of it, to patch up this disaster that we've created for ourselves. How is it possible to, to craft legislation that would bring the help that is needed, that would target the help that is needed, that is legitimate, without allowing some of that money to be used for purposes like you just described? Well, Guy, that's exactly what we're working on. Uh, as one member of Congress and working with my other Republican colleagues from Illinois, we are not going to incentivize bad behavior, uh, which, again, um, uh, has been done in Illinois. We, the last thing we want to do is give a federal bailout to Illinois that incentivized everything they've engaged in. So what we are looking at is uh, how do we structure this legitimate money that's COVID related coming to states uh, and, and how do we attach um, legislative language to that that will help Illinois get back on its feet. Now, 
I know uh, Mitch McConnell uh, it was very controversial. He talked about bankruptcy. But I'm glad he talked about bankruptcy. Do I want Illinois to file for bankruptcy? Of course not. I don't think that would be good long term for the state. But is that a leverage point for us to tell people in Illinois, particularly our Democrat colleagues in the state capital of Springfield, we want to help you if it's COVID related. But if you want to receive this money, we want to put some guardrails in place, some mm-hmm. fiscal restraint in place to help get the state of Illinois back on it. I don't think that's too much to ask when we've no. had a legislature for 25 years that haven't been able to do any of these things. No, I would I would lose my mind if this gambit succeeded. And you mentioned the number that was thrown out there, the request, $44 billion. And they I don't know where they come up with that dollar figure, frankly, Congressman. And I do know that within that pot that they're asking for, a significant chunk of it would be for pensions, uh, like literally a pension bailout, the very heart of the problem in Illinois that has nothing to do with coronavirus. They are, they're not even really hiding the football here. They're saying, give us the money, Washington. It's a crisis. We've been irresponsible, and we want to use some of it for the pension mess that is self-inflicted. Well, listen, that that's not going to happen, uh, and it's not going to happen uh, with, with us standing up for this. And, again, uh, working with other states and other lawmakers to make sure that we uh, don't let that happen is, is the, the main goal here. Uh, and, and, again, I go back to $140 billion in unfunded liability that continues to grow. We are incapable unless we change our pension system, which there are plenty of ways to do that, and other states have done it. That's really what we can do. But we're looking at how do we put in language from a federal standpoint to tie the hands of of Springfield and Illinois on behalf of taxpayers Mm -hmm. to get us on a path to fiscal responsibility. We are looking at that currently. We are working with, I serve on the Ways and Means Committee. I'm working with my colleagues there and the administration. Again, uh, this is our time and our opportunity to to look out for the taxpayers of Illinois and, and help bring some fiscal restraint. And you look at those budget holes in Illinois, you look at the credit downgrades for the state of Illinois, those have been earned. Every penny of those problems have been earned by Springfield for years, and it's just totally anathema to me, and it sounds like it is to you as well, some sort of a bailout on those particular issues. COVID, fine. Non-COVID, hell no. (laughs) That's basically my take on this. I want to ask you, Congressman, a separate question. We had... Uh, Congressman Scalise, the whip, on the show last week, and it sounded like there was a bit of a false start, to continue with my football analogy. There was a bit of a false start in the House from your Democratic colleagues where it sounded like they were going to bring you guys back into session, and then Stanley Hoyer came out and said, actually, wait, never mind, we're not going to be back in session for a while, Uh, whereas Mitch McConnell brought the Senate back today and said, we're going to be working, the American people have to work around the clock, we're going to be doing the same thing in the Senate and introducing a number of priorities on the Senate side. Do you believe, Congressman, that the House of Representatives should also be in session right now? Absolutely. We should be back there right now. And if you listen to the faulty logic from Steny Hoyer and Nancy Pelosi, they said they listened to the attending physician. Well, I have news. The attending physician also uh, covers the Senate. And Mitch McConnell is listening to the attending physician and made a determination based on you know uh, health risk that the Senate can be back there. So to, I think it's a really hypocritical guy. Uh, uh, listen, I'm asking grocery store clerks in my district. I'm asking truck drivers in my district. I'm asking meat cutters that are forced to stay open and cut meat, uh, farmers that are planting right now. We ask all these other people to work and do their jobs, but yet Congress is staying home. Um, I, I just, again, it's hypocritical. We ought to be back there. And by the way, we've been back there twice already. We've exercised all of the social distancing, all the CDC guidelines, we have a plan in place and a protocol. We're, we're spending up to $3 trillion now. We ought to be there making sure this money's spent correctly, making sure that the, the, the government's running correctly, that we have proper oversight. That's our role as members of Congress, but yet we're getting paid to sit at home. I just think it's the wrong approach to take, and I've, I've spoken out about it and going to continue to speak out about it, against it. Congressman LaHood, President Trump last night on the Fox News Town Hall talked about the balance of public health and reopening the economy. Listen to cut one. Here was the president last evening. Well, I think you can satisfy both. 
If you're scared, you're going to stay back a little bit and you're going to watch it. But there are other people that are scared about being locked in a room and losing their job and not having any income. And, you know, for the first time, these are workers. These are people that want to get back and work and make a living. And they're afraid their job's not going to be there. And at a certain point, if you keep it going too long, that's going to happen. So I understand that very well. Congressman, less than a minute, just your reaction to that from the president and what you think the lesson ought to be, how Governor Pritzker in Illinois should be approaching this, this frankly difficult and delicate balance. Well, listen, I'm disappointed in our governor that he has the one-size-fits-all for the entire state of Illinois. I represent downstate Illinois. I border Iowa and Missouri. We have to have the recognition uh, downstate Illinois is not the same as Chicago. Listen, we are a resilient and a resourceful and a prayerful country. Give people the benefit of the doubt. Yes, the coronavirus may hurt and kill people in some of our urban, dense areas. But I'm going to tell you, poverty kills also. And the lack of mm-hmm. people having a paycheck or making a livelihood is going to cause a lot more problems. Yeah, and I think you've so. got to have balance. And flexibility, to your point. Congressman Darren LaHood, Illinois 18, a Republican. Congressman, thank you for your time today. Thank you, Guy. Great to be on with you.